Hi guys, it's Lawrence. I just wanted to, uh, there's been some questions lately on how to do an STL import and how to go about actually making, uh, you know, something from Google SketchUp, for example, into a usable pattern. I thought I'd just do a quick video for you guys. I know it's been spent a few times before, but eh, what the heck, it's fun to make videos, right? Okay, so the first thing is, um, you go to the, 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 the Google SketchUp 3D Warehouse. Now, I've got it bookmarked, but you can always just type in there, um, SketchUp Warehouse. And if you do that, the very first one up there is going to come up the, the 3D Warehouse. Now, what this is, is just it's thousands and thousands and thousands of free um, files, most of them three dimensional. So there's everything from buildings uh, to you know articles of clothing to articles from Roger House to vehicles to weapons. Uh, vehicles are pretty good. I mean, for example, you can just type in their fire truck. Go ahead and open this up wide. Now, it's not just these that are there. There's actually ten whole uh, pages of fire trucks. Now, some of them may not be fire trucks, and some of them may be. Um, but, you know, you can get right down to sometimes you can type in Mercedes, you know, or whatever kind of fire truck you want to use. Um, another thing I've found is if you use describers, like, say, old fire truck, um, you're not going to get as many, you know, but there's, you know, 1943, there's no brush truck. Um, I mean, this one's interesting. It looks like it was a toy. Now, a lot of these things, if they do come up like that, they're pretty interesting, and they usually make pretty good carves. Like, I look at this one right now, and I go, hey, that would make a great toy. And, it, and down here at the bottom, it actually shows you other things. If you like this one, you might like yeah, these ones. So, like classic toy roadster, toy train, or whatever else. But point being, this one's pretty nice. So what you do is you put, press on Download Model, and then you download it. Now, you need to go in there and actually download SketchUp. It's free, um, and, and install it. You can just do a search, uh, and then once you've done that, you get the SketchUp program. So it's downloaded the SketchUp program, uh, this, this fire truck, rather. So it's now opened up in Google SketchUp, which, again, is a 3D viewer that you can both create and uh, view 3D models. So once I've got a 3D model that I like, um, I'll go ahead and I'll select all the things that I want to actually export as an STL. In this case, it's all of it. Sometimes there's backgrounds you don't want to use, or th you know, sometimes you you might just want this lighting, this this wheel right here, you know, and and that's great. You can do that if you want to. In fact, if you wanted to create one of these out of wood and cut them out on your car, right? You even could. You could just go in there and select individual parts. Uh, and now, however, comma, that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> we're, we're doing the whole thing. So go ahead, and I'm going to go up here to plugins, and I've gotten a plugin uh, which allows me to export STL files. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to put it on my desktop, and I'm going to call it Old Fire Truck. And I went ahead and exported that. Now, the place that I got that is. I went into uh, into my you know into the internet, and I just Googled SketchUp. Uh, it's called the STL Exporter uh, plugin, and I think it was in here that I got mine. But you can just go in there right in here. It is download the latest STL plugin. So they exist. They just it makes a, one more feature on SketchUp work. So anyway, so I'm done with SketchUp now because I've exported this as an STL, and along with all this other stuff I have on my desktop, here it is right here. So now it's an STL. So I can go ahead and open up my Carbrite software. And it's taking its time, and I don't have to worry about this part yet. I'm just going to go ahead and go New, Import, Import STL file. Click on Import STL. Now I want to find my STL that I just did, and it came up on my screen. Now the first thing you'll notice is it's not turned the right way. So I can go ahead and turn these things until I get what I want. Now the next thing you'll notice is, oh wow, it didn't do the whole thing. There's parts of the wheels it didn't export. There's all kinds of problems with this. So. Not that I planned on this happening or anything, but that's what happens sometimes. 
So, what I can do next is instead of using uh, the STL export fu function, which obviously didn't work. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go over it this way. Let's go the other way. I'm going to go ahead and open the SketchUp file back up again. And I want to use a different way of exporting this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up down here to File, Export, 3D Model. And if you look, my export type does not have STL available. Now this you don't need a plugin for. This just comes straight with SketchUp. But what it does allow you to export is what's called a Collada file. So I can go ahead and export this, and it will export all these pieces without me selecting them or doing anything with them. I'm going to go ahead and close that out again. Now if you look, the old time fire truck, this should be a Collada file. And it is. The DAE, which is Collada in this case. And I've got it set for a, uh, a program called uh, a Mesh Mixer to open it up. I'm sorry, Mesh Lab to open it up. Now Mesh Lab is another free program. You can just Google it and open it up. And when it, you double click on it, it opens up this Collada file. And the nice thing about, and you just hit OK, the nice thing about Mesh Lab is two things. Number one, if we wanted to, we could actually go in here and pre-position our model, which I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. Number two, it actually exports STL files. So I've, I've already got this thing all ready to go and export. So I can just go in here to File, I can go Export Mesh As, and I can go down to STL. I can go ahead and save it. Now it should have old time fire truck as an STL, and it sure enough does. So let's go ahead and try that and see if that one works. Excuse my messy desktop, I've been doing a lot lately. <laughs> okay, so let's go back in here to File, Import, Import STL file. Let's find old time fire truck. Open that up and let's see if it worked any better. And it looks like, sure enough, this one worked better. And that's just one of those things with Google Search Up. Sometimes the plugin will work great. Sometimes you have to go ahead and bring it into Mesh Lab, and sometimes vice versa. So again, let's go ahead and revert this back so you can see it's not facing the right way. Now it's facing the correct way. So now that I've got my file in there, I uh, and it's face this way. The next thing I want to do is change my sizing. Now, I don't usually mess with the thickness. I know some people do at this point. I don't. What I end up doing, though, is I, I try to make it a manageable size. So, if the X that's this way is 10 inches long, and the Y, which is up and down, is a little bit short of 6, and it's about 4.5 deep, what I'll go ahead and do is probably just chop this in half. And I'll just make it about like 2. So, now we're talking 3 by 2 by 1.5. So that's, that's manageable anyway. So I can go into Next right now. Now a lot of people go ahead and just cut this into two parts. I don't tend to do that. What I'll do is I'll look and I'll go, okay, this thing, I, I three quarters of an inch back, that's all the further it lets me go. If I click on this little Edit Thickness button, then what I can do is I can actually change this. And I can make it five inches if I want to. And now you see it goes all the way back to the back. In fact, let's make it more like eight inches. So now, you can see how I can go all the way back to the back on this thing. Now the next thing I can do is go ahead and start positioning it the correct way. Now right now, if I send it off as a, as a, uh, a pattern, it's going to be a sideline pattern just like this. That's not necessarily what we want. Most of the times, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and kind of turn it to where this is how I'd want it. I'd want it sort of an angle because it looks better. So what I'll do... And I go up in here and I just play with these things. I'll back it off like this. I'll turn it just a little bit to give it an angle. And I try not to cut off too much of the back. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go into here and I'll start changing this angle. And I'll, I'll bring it down. Now that would, that would bring it the wrong way. So if I bring it back up, now, and again, I wish that uh, Carveride had a button that would just automatically revert to what it's going to do, but it doesn't, so I have to eyeball it. So right now you can see that it's going to be something like that, which is not enough still. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is bring a little bit more over, a 
little bit more back. Just a little bit more down. Sometimes you just kind of try it out. See if it works. And that's what I'm going to do in this case, I think. So then what I'll go ahead and do is just hit on next. And that didn't work. So I wasn't supposed to hit next. I was supposed to hit cut. Now you'll notice if I hit cut, it won't work because there's nothing to cut. So what I'm going to do is just back it off just a hair. So there's something to cut. And then I hit cut. And then when I hit next, you can see my slice is right there. Which, that's still not a great slice, but it's better than just a side-on view. And it works for us, just to use an example. So now I'll go ahead and unclick on this, and I'm going to save it uh, as a pattern. No, nope, I'm going to save it in my save where it's at the final little time of our truck. Let's go ahead and just do that. Now it's easy enough just to go into a, a new file. Let's say 30 by 12 by half an inch. Which one's making three quarters of an inch. Just for giggles here. Now you can go into your favorites because that, that was where it was. It was called Old Time Fire Truck. And here it is right here. We'll go ahead and change our depth to 0.5. And there's our fire truck pattern right there that we just did. That actually isn't too bad of a little pattern as far as the sun is going. And that's just one easy way to bring in SketchUp files. Um, I hope this worked for you. And, uh, you know, again, this is multiple places have shown this off. Um, I just wanted to use this as an example uh, so I can show you guys how it works. Again, I hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.